Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. To today, uh, kind of a special day for the Rolling Stones. Today is their opening day of their 60th anniversary tour. The first show was today over in Spain. Uh, the bits and pieces I've seen on the internet look really good. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video. Uh, today's also Ronnie Wood's 75th birthday. And I just figured I'd do a quick video about Ron Wood because, you know what, all of these rock stars that we love are passing away. And, of course, Charlie Watts passing away. Why not take a, a little look at Ronnie Wood's solo career, which is a lot more extensive than a lot of people may realize. Um, so let's start off with his debut album. And that came out in 1974, and here's the original vinyl. And yeah, that's not a cross out, that's the artwork. Uh, Ron Wood, I've got my own album to do. Uh, that was the front, that's the back, that's the track listing. And then I have it also on uh, CD as well. This was his first solo record. I'll show you something. Uh, I have a huge archive of like every Cream and Circus magazine, and this is from December of 1974. And they actually did a review of Ronnie's first solo record. So let's hear what the pros had to say. Yeah, this is Cream Magazine. And they wrote, let's see, the average cynic would probably expect any album with such a long-time competent sideman as Ronnie Wood to be merely competent. What he wouldn't expect is a juicy crossbreed of sticky fingers, every picture tells a story, and hands of Jack the Ripper. Interesting. Uh, at one point he goes on to say, Ron Wood is one of the most incompetent vocalists imaginable, no better than you or I, and probably worse, and destined never to inspire jealousy in a throat cancer patient. Ouch. Uh, obviously, this is long before Ronnie had cancer and has been fighting it, so uh, ouch on that one. Um, but then at the end, he goes on to say, but in total, there's so much pure power in this album that I can recommend it without question. Um, it's good to find someone with both the talent and the friends for when the talent runs out to come up with a passable effort that should sell on more than just the name. Uh, listen, everybody in the music business seems to love Ronnie Wood, and he's got a great personality. I actually met him once, and I'll talk about that in a bit. And you feel that, you know, just fun friendliness on this first album. Um, uh, it's a really good record. I think half of it is is great, half of it's just good. But uh, I Can Feel the Fire, Fieriest Man, the duet that he wrote with a uh, song that he wrote with George Harrison is great. Mr. Fires Me is great. Take a look at the guy, it's really fun. Act Together, Jagger Richards track that he gave to Ronnie Wood. I love that. Am I Grooving You is funky, is great. I think Side Two is a little bit weaker than the first side. First side's killer. Side two also has Sure the One You Need, another Jagger Richard track that they gave to him. Um, the story that I understand is that they gave it to him in exchange for the title track of It's Only Rock and Roll that Ronnie had a hand in writing in a big way, um, my understanding. But anyway, his first solo album is definitely probably my second favorite Ronnie Wood album. Um, this is a really good one. A year later, 1975, he released his second album, Now Look. And this is the original version of that. And this one, to me, was a big drop off of quality. You know, again, it's raw, underproduced. You know, it's like a party kind of an album. Um, but this one's got a lot more covers. Um, it's just not at the same quality, I feel, as his first solo record. It's still good. Uh, it's got a kind of a Ronnie Wood classic in Breathe On Me, which is a song I love, but it's certainly not a commercial track. If you don't like Ronnie Wood and his vocals, and it's kind of a meandering ballad, but I always really liked it. I think it's got a good groove. But um, for me, this is just an okay album. That was his second solo album. But then we get to, uh, oh, I did this one. And this was a soundtrack album for a film that I don't know anybody who's ever seen. i never seen it. And this was an album he did with Ronnie Lane, Mahoney's Last Stand. This is a soundtrack album, and basically it's kind of musical you know, stuff that, uh, like uh, incidental music for soundtrack um, that uh, for a movie that I don't know anybody's ever seen. Um, it's not a, an album that you would listen to regularly. It's certainly not an album that I would listen to regularly. Um, but it was nice to have for the collection. But I guess enough people bought it because eventually they put it out on CD, digitally remastered CD. 
Here's that version, and it even has bonus tracks on it. But again, this is probably my least listened to Ronnie Wood album, because it's more like music for a soundtrack of a movie. We go to 1979, and for me, that's where things change. 1979, he's officially a member of the band of the Stones. They had put out Some Girls, a killer album. And I guess he was really on fire with the band because he released what I feel is by far his best solo record, Give Me Some Neck. I love the cover. He did the artwork. And even the inside, you know, album jacket is filled with his artwork on both sides. Um, I love the packaging of this album. But most importantly, I love the songs. This is a killer Ron Wood album. You want to get a solo Ron Wood album. To me, this is the one to get. Roy Thomas Baker produced it. It's still really raw and kind of unproduced, but I think the songs can't be beat. I love it from top to bottom. And I guess he did too, because back in 1979, he decided to put together a band and play a big tour. Uh, the Stones in the 78 tour didn't play a lot of big markets. They didn't play New York. They only played a surprise gig at the Palladium in the Capitol Theater. So there was a lot of people dying to get as close to the Stones as they could. And I think he took advantage of that. He formed the New Barbarians. Much later, a book came out about this historic tour. Uh, this is a whole hardcover book about the New Barbarians. Um, I was lucky enough to see that tour. And it was to promote Give Me Some Neck. Um, <laughs> it's an al a tour that I saw at Madison Square Garden. And let's go to the Alan Rosenberg archives for that. I'll show you something. So this is from my archives. And there is an original review from the New York Times of the show. And there's the concert ticket down there, Madison Square Garden, 1250. And there it is. The New Barbarians with Ron Wood, Keith Richards, Ziggy Mortalese, Bobby Keys, Ian McLaughlin, Stick, Stanley Clark, May 7th. At Madison Square Garden. I have a, a book of every tick concert I've ever been to with the ticket stubs and reviews. Um, <laughs> did not get the greatest reviews, but uh, it's basically what you would expect from Ron Wood. Um, uh, like most amateur vocalists, the strain of a tour has left him hoarse, and his singing was pretty perfunctory. Um, you know... But then he goes off when he starts doing Stones tracks. You know, how can they do Love in Vain without Mick Jagger? I don't know. Or for the matter, Hockey Tonk Women. Or if most of all, Jumper Jack Flash, it didn't make much sense. Still, the instrumental work was often fun. And the non-Stones rhythm section, which was Stanley Clark and Ziggy Moto least, uh, they almost stole the show. And that is kind of true. Uh, I remember Stanley Clark did a bass solo in there, and it was killer. But here's some other reviews. In fact, this review... Focus on St. Stanley and the New Barbarians. Um, and here was another review from that show. Uh, Madison Square Garden. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. As the saying goes, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Those who paid to see stars saw stars. Those who wanted musical excitement or a real performance probably should have stayed home. Ouch. Um, you know, for what it was, it was... Fun, uh, and I was glad I saw it, but, uh, you know, we went to see it expecting Mick Jagger and Neil Young to come out. That was with the rumors, and they didn't. But it was still a fun show. And then uh, much later on, they started releasing live stuff, which is all they had from the New Barbarians. So here was the remastered uh, album that he toured for, Give Me Some Neck. That's the one I would get. Um, there's bootlegs out there galore. This was a double bootleg uh, called Meet is Murder. Uh, pretty much played the same set list every night. And then Ronnie started releasing his own bootleg series. And here is Buried Alive, Live in Maryland. And that was the set list. And then he released this one. Partially Wanted Dead or Alive, Live from Madison Square Garden, the show that I was at. It's not the complete show, but it's uh, still pretty damn good. So... Uh, the New Barbarians, Ronnie Wood, 1979. He followed that up with this solo record, which I was pumped for because I loved Give Me Some Neck, and he released one, two, three, four, and great artwork on the cover, but man, I just thought this album was a total disappointment. It is so loose, 
almost sounds like demos. His vocals always, to a certain extent, leave something to be desired, but really on this album, they're really raw. You know, it's got a couple of great songs, and Outlaws was great. I liked Fountain of Love. That was kind of R&B-ish. Uh, she Was Out There is pretty good. But overall, I thought this album was a huge disappointment compared to um, Give Me Some Neck. But his albums, a lot of times they have all, you know, his handwritten artwork and things like that. So that was kind of nice. Um, after that, he took a break with his solo stuff for a bit. And then he came back uh, and he did this one, Slide On This. This was a really strong record, I thought. Um, but it's very different. Because instead of him doing... Well, the vocals, he largely shares a lot of vocals with Bernard Fowler, who, of course, was the backup singer of the Stones at that point. Um, and Ronnie did this album. I thought it was pretty strong uh, because, you know, Bernard Fowler's a, a tremendous singer. He also sang on Charlie Watts solo records and uh, a really good selection of songs. So if I was going to tell you a Ronnie Wood solo record to get, I would certainly get Give Me Some Neck and I'd get his first one. And then I would get this one as well. Slide on this. They're all out of print, unfortunately. This record label went out of business. He went on tour. I saw that show as well in the city. That was in a club and uh, with Bernard Fowler. And it was a killer band. And again, the material in the sound was particularly strong. So that was a great tour. And he released a live album from that tour called Slide on Live. Plugged in and standing. Um, and basically, it's a mix of stuff from the Slide on This album. Uh, he put in Pretty Beat Up, which was kind of cool. That's from the Stones on the cover album, a song that he, he had a hand in writing. So this was a fun live record. And then, uh, you know, there's a, a bunch of Ronnie Wood pseudo bootlegs. This is another one. Uh, live at Electric Ladyland. This was a radio broadcast that I believe he later put out. Again, not essential stuff, but a good mixture of tracks. Um, you know, Throw and Stay With Me, which of course he did with the faces. He did a live record from japan live at the ritz with ronnie wood and bo diddley bo diddley and they share uh songs you know kind of 50 50 really this is also it's a fun listen none of these are essential he does outlaws from the one two three four album on this which is a really good performance um he started again he had his own record label for a while uh wooden records and he put out this one the first barbarians this was fun this was after the first album, and he did that famous live show at Kilburn University with Keith Richards. And that's on this. Uh, also, Rod Stewart comes out and helps him as well. So this is kind of a cool show, and you get the CD of the whole show, and then there's a black and white DVD. Um, so this is from his first uh, solo show, and that was pretty good. Uh, a bunch of anthologies we get. Uh, this is the best of them, the Ronnie Wood Anthology, the Essential Cross Section. This is a two-CD set, and the first CD is what he considers, I guess, a lot of the best of his solo stuff. Good collection. And then the second CD is from his stuff that he had a hand in writing with Rod Stewart and the Birds and even the Stones. Everything is turned into gold. There's a good deep cut that's on there. But he kept putting out solo stuff. For me, they became less essential. Here's a latter one called Not For Beginnings. I like the artwork on this better than the uh, the music, unfortunately. But it's not bad. He does a cover of Rock and Roll Star. Totally unessential. Um, but, you know, he kept him busy. Uh, his last true, to me, solo record was this one, I Feel Like Playing. Uh, that was his style of artwork at the time. I did not care for it. I still don't care for the artwork. But the record is a lot better than the artwork. But again, it, it's not really essential stuff. It's not stuff that I go back and play a lot, like those original Ronnie Wood solo records. Um, the last one I got is this one, Mad Love, a live tribute to Chuck Berry, where he does uh, with a live uh, show a bunch of Chuck Berry classics. It's fine. You know, do you really need Ronnie Wood doing Chuck Berry classics? I don't know, but it's 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 certainly not a bad listen. Um, other than that, uh, you know, of course, he's a famous artist. This was his first book, and it was called uh, Ron Wood by Ron Wood, uh, Paintings and Drawings. And, uh, you know, I happen to enjoy his artwork. 
I'm not an art expert. A lot of people say, well, if he wasn't Ronnie Wood, he probably wouldn't be such a famous artist. I don't know. I like it. This is a beautiful coffee table book of his art. Um, I think a lot of it is really good. And this is a beautiful book. I don't know if it's still out there, but uh, a collection of most of his artwork, or a lot of his artwork, pretty damn good. Which leads me to one final story where I actually met Ronnie Wood. Oh, he also came out with an autobiography, which was a pretty good read. This was a long time ago. Um, so I went to an art gallery, which in the city many, many years ago, uh, that was selling his art. And I'm looking around, and just in case Ronnie was going to be there, I didn't know. I brought some things to autograph, uh, just in case. And sure enough, he walked in, and I'm in the art gallery. And um, I'm looking at his artwork, and... Either he came over to me or I went over to him. But he was just like a, a normal guy. And he was with his wife at the time, Joe Howard. And I started talking to him. And I spoke to him for like five minutes, which is a pretty long time if you're talking to somebody, standing there looking at his artwork. And I remember him asking, what do I think? And I'm like, I really like it. And he's like, uh, are you going to buy it? And I'm like, I wish I could, but I can't afford it, Ronnie. <laughs> you know, and he had a laugh. And then um, I pulled out two things, asked him if he would autograph it. And he was just such a nice guy, you know. He was asking me if I'm going to buy his artwork, and I'm like, no. And he signed my uh, two things, so I have them framed in my archives. And this is a cassette version of that Live at the Ritz album, and he hand-signed that. And then he did get a kick out of this one, which is framed, as you can see. And this is, I love this ad for the Suckin' in the 70s album. This was like a Billboard magazine ad that I framed. But it's signed by Mick Taylor. I met Mick Taylor first, and he signed it. And I thought to myself, well, wouldn't it be cool if I can get Ronnie Wood to sign this? Because they're both on the album because it's a compilation. And sure enough, Ronnie Wood signed it. And actually, I had his wife at the time sign it too, Joe Howard. So there is a great ad um, signed by Ronnie Wood and Joe Howard and Mick Taylor. Um, but he was just such a nice guy, you know. And I'm standing right next to him. And, you know, I always think the stars would be so, so much bigger than life. But he was standing next to just a regular guy. And I'm pretty short, and he was not a big guy at all. And I remember uh, I'm a little follically challenged, let's say. And uh, I was looking at his hair saying, God, how do these guys have such thick hair when they're older? But it, it was great. Uh, just a nice guy. And that's apparently the story of Ronnie Wood. Everybody loves him uh, as a person, and he's a fine guitarist. And I kind of come down on him sometimes when I've seen the Stones so many times live, and uh, I'm like, you know, sometimes I wish he would, back then, I, I, I remember in Bridge, Bridges to Babylon tour so a bunch of times, and I'm like, man, stop jumping around and play some good guitar, some good lead, but every once in a while, he pops it out, and now, you know, he's really got to step up his game, because obviously, Keith uh, doesn't have the ability on guitar that he used to have, so, um, anyway, that's the story, and one final thought, you know, the bits and pieces I saw at the opening night of the Stones look great, um, but they did one thing that I thought was awesome. So, uh, and this is true. So a lot of my friends have always said, if you ever got to hang out with Mick Jagger, what would you say to him? And I would just want to talk to Mick Jagger about his music, especially his solo career. But there was always one thing I would have said to him. I swear to God, it drove me crazy. You know, I, I hate the stagnant stones set list that they've pretty much played for the last 20 years. It just drives me crazy. And I would say to Mick Jagger, why don't you ever fucking play Out of Time? It's one of your best songs, relatively unknown, but it's still known. Scorsese used it. And I think live it would be killer because it's so catchy. And everybody would sing, baby, 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 you're out of time. And as far as I know, it had never been played before live. Maybe they played it in like 66, but I, I've never heard a bootleg version of it. Never heard a live version well, they played it live opening night tonight, and I saw the video on the little, you know, somebody recorded on the phone. Man, it sounded killer. And shit, just like my dream, when the song ended, they went back into it because 50,000 people are singing, baby, 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 you're out of time. So thank you, Mick Jagger, for putting that into the set list. And hopefully, my little rant now, that'll wake you up that you don't have to keep playing the same 15 songs for the last 20 years. You have enough fans out there that you have the biggest, greatest body of work ever. Stop playing some other stuff, and uh, it people will love it. So, in my little rant, um, thanks for playing Out of Time, and I hope you continue to play it. Um, 
And uh, if I had my way, you're, they always do this, vote the four songs. I'd rather see all four of those songs and then vote on should they play Sympathy for the Devil, Jumper Jack Flash, or Honky Tonk Woman. Throw those out and play these other four. That would be my wish. Anyway, what can I tell you? Thanks for tuning in. Happy 75th birthday to Ronnie Wood. Thank God you're still with us and healthy and out there playing and giving it your all because um, we have to appreciate um, our artists and rock stars while we still have them, um, and we're certainly learning that in this day and age. So thanks for tuning in. If you enjoy my videos, please hit subscribe. Don't have a lot of subscribers, and I'm trying to get this channel to grow and do stuff that people would like and be a little informative and maybe start showing you some of my really cool archive stuff that I don't think too many people have. Anyway, thanks again. Have a great night.